Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mr. Viveris. It is Thursday, April 30th, 2020, uh, here with another edition of Virtual Learning with Mr. Viveris. Uh, I was just looking up our song of the day, going to kick us up, kick us off a little bit of music. I have a feeling, though, I'm going to have an ad because I have not watched a YouTube video all day. Of course, it's a Hulu ad. From one of my favorite albums of all time. This is My Hero by the Foo Fighters. The album was The Color and the Shape. Watch him as they go. Talk about you guys, my heroes. There goes my hero. Zodinary. All right. So, voice of a generation there. That's Dave Grohl, if you've not heard. Uh, Dave Grohl is a very famous musician. Uh, he used to play in the band Nirvana as their drummer. But after the death of Kurt Cobain, um, he started his own band, and they became the Foo Fighters, and the legend continues as they continue to tour to this day. Hopefully, we can get a chance to see some Foo Fighters concerts this summer, but we'll see. going to take you on over to today's agenda. So, going to start with a little review of our question of the week so far. How do you like your toast uh, right now? Uh, there is a new question of the week champion right now they're clinging to the lead but we'll see if that will continue uh some news regarding phase one and phase two assignments again they should be completed by may 5th 2020 also some exciting news came down from the district uh regarding chromebooks and chromebooks will be distributed with the phase three work beginning may 11th 2020 so that's not next week that is the following week uh our work period today is going to focus on day one of word generation 2.07 should the government fund embryonic stem cell research now i know that sounds confusing what is embryonic stem cell research we're going to really break that down today to make sure everybody understands uh exactly what this topic is about then we'll read this week's issue page 37 uh review some reading notes and our seven steps vocabulary uh before uh closing things up with just a quick preview of tomorrow's do the math section uh which is page 39 of word generation 2.07 so no surprises here in terms of our lesson vocabulary uh the word embryo paralyzed theory investigate and obtain are all part of our lesson vocabulary today and for our next four lessons all right going to take you on over back here to what i've been calling the command center ground zero whatever you want to call it all right this is this is where the learning happens all right so i can see you guys all out there got a great uh connection today things are going smoothly so uh, before we begin, just want to talk real quick about our question of the week. Uh, our question of the week so far, drum roll please. Seven Harvard, you guys are currently in the lead. Okay. Uh, after a quick check this morning, I noticed that Seven Harvard is up six engagements to Seven Yale's five engagements. So uh, the defending two-time question of the week champion, Seven Yale, you guys got some work to do because Seven Harvard uh, just took the lead and it looks like they might start to pull away. Uh, let's make sure that we're continuing to engage uh, regarding our question of the week this week. How do you like your toast? Um, 
And continuing on with a couple of tidbits of news, that's a quick reminder, your phase one and phase two work should be completed by next week, uh, preferably by Tuesday, which set you right up for success. Uh, however, there will be no new assignments next week. So uh, in terms of videos um, and, and work that you need to complete, next week's going to be kind of like a catch-up week before the phase three work is distributed the following week. And during the phase three work, if you've not heard yet, uh, that work will start to be distributed, I believe, May 11th, Monday, May 11th, 2020. Um, when they distribute the phase three work, they're expecting to collect your phase one and phase two work and provide those of you who may need them uh, with Chromebooks, okay? Because our next, I've learned a little bit more about our work uh, that we're gonna be completing for our phase three work. It's something through Common Lit. I don't have all of the details yet, uh, but you know, I have a meeting tomorrow with my um, department team uh, to discuss a little bit more about you know what this work will look like for phase three. So looking forward to hopefully sharing some details about that with you tomorrow. Um, so last but not least, we're going to get into uh, our question of the week. Well, I shouldn't say question of the week, but our new unit, we're generation 2.07. Should the government fund embryonic stem cell research? So you're probably wondering, what is embryonic stem cell research? You know, How does that apply to me? Let me just kind of throw a scenario out there to you. Okay, let's say that Mr. V lost his ear in a horrific accident. Okay, that would obviously mean that, you know, I have a, a physical deformity. Okay, scientists have developed a theory that using embryonic stem cells, which are stem cells that or cells that come from a embryo, an embryo is a human fertilized egg okay or you might call it a fetus okay but scientists have a theory that if they can extract stem cells from embryonic um sources so from an embryo from a fetus then they might be able to help people like me who might have lost their ear in some sort of industrial accident um stem cells are not just to help perhaps grow what they call replacement parts, but they might also be uh, helpful to those people who suffer from chronic illness, uh, as we'll read a little bit about today, about how embryonic stem cells could possibly help uh, people with Alzheimer's disease or you know, people who have suffered some sort of uh, loss of brain function in another way. Um, so to kind of put it plainly, okay, the question is, should the government fund embryonic stem cells? So should the government okay provide money that is collected from tax dollars so should they provide that money to labs to study a bit more about embryonic stem cells and the possible benefits they could have on human health so to get into today's lesson in a little bit more detail i'm going to present my screen and get to today's or this week's issue Hopefully that gives you a little uh, sense of what we're talking about. I think the article uh, makes it a bit clearer. And again, if the article doesn't make all that much sense, um, we're going to get into my notes anyway that hopefully break it down a bit further. So we're generation 2.07. Should the government fund embryonic stem cell research? Uh, again, our words of the week are embryo, paralyze, theory, investigate, and obtain. Going to get down now to the reading. So it reads, in summer 2003, toddler Kai Harriet of Boston was sitting on her porch singing with her sister. A gang member shot into the air to scare Kai's neighbors. Kai was hit by a bullet. After being shot, Kai was paralyzed. She could not move from the waist down. Because of her injury, Kai must use a wheelchair. But scientists have an idea that might help. They have a theory that stem cells can someday help people like Kai. Stem cells are found in different parts of the human body, including in our blood. Stem cells are also found in fertilized human eggs called embryos. Stem cells from embryos can develop into cells that do many different jobs in the human body. With more research, scientists may be able to grow replacement parts for humans from stem cells. So again, that kind of connects with my example to, to, to kick off our lesson today. Um, again, embryos are uh, stem cell or embryonic stem cells, I should say, are stem cells that are found in fertilized human eggs. Right? Sometimes they refer to those as a fetus, F-E-T-U-S. Continuing on. If doctors can grow spinal cord cells, people like Kai might walk again. New brain cells could help people who have had strokes or Alzheimer's disease. Scientists 
might also learn to grow the cells that make insulin. This could help people with diabetes. But to obtain some stem cells, scientists must destroy a human embryo. Human embryos are usually obtained from unused fertilized eggs from in vitro fertilization, or IVF. This is when a couple uses a reproductive specialist to help them have a child. For example, a couple has 10 eggs that have been fertilized but only uses four eggs to start their family. This couple then has six leftover embryos that can be donated to stem cell research. Many people think that human life begins when an egg is fertilized. They think destroying a human embryo is like murder. They say scientists should only work with stem cells from adults, but most scientists find that stem cells taken from adults won't grow into the many different kinds of human cells the way that stem cells from embryos do. Stem cells from embryos may be our only hope of curing some diseases. Yet, however promising stem cell research is, many citizens Sorry, guys, my cat's attacking me. Many citizens oppose it. They object to having their tax dollars spent on something they think is unethical. Investigating stem cells in their medical benefits will take years and cost millions. Should researchers obtain funding from the government to investigate embryonic stem cell research? So again, the big question here is, should researchers obtain funding from the government to investigate embryonic stem cells? Sorry about that uh, little delay there. My cat is going a little bit haywire uh, while I'm trying to record this video. Um, so what I'm going to do now, right, we've read through the article. I'm going to take you now over to the notes that break down the article paragraph by paragraph. Uh, which is something I've been doing, we've been doing consistently uh, while we've completed this word generation work. Uh, so hopefully these notes have been very helpful. And as you know, with each paragraph, I give it a subheading that kind of just captures the gist. All right. So paragraph one, it had mentioned the story uh, about Kai Harriet and about how Kai Harriet is paralyzed after being accidentally shot. So just to kind of recap that story, Kai was a toddler in Boston, Mass, when she was accidentally shot by a stray bullet fired by gang members. All right. She was actually outside playing with her sister uh, and the gang members were just trying to scare her neighbors. But that bullet accidentally struck Kai. As a result, Kai was paralyzed from the waist down and now uses a wheelchair to get around. So paralyzed means that she can no longer move or it has no um, uh, bodily functions from the waist down. Okay, at least that's um, you know how par uh, being paralyzed has affected her. Some people can be paralyzed uh, from the neck down, which means they have no feeling really or, or function anywhere in their body. Uh, for Kai, she was paralyzed from the waist down. So scientists have a theory that stem cells could someday help people like Kai. Paragraph two discussed stem cells and embryos, okay, and kind of helped us to understand, you know, where stem cells can be found and what embryos are. So it mentions that stem cells can be found in different parts of our body, including our blood and in fertilized human eggs, okay? Embryos are fertilized human eggs, okay? So uh, stem cells can be found in our blood. They can be find found actually in our uh, spinal fluid as well. Uh, and they can also be found in fertilized human eggs. So embryos are fertilized human eggs. And stem cells from embryos can develop into cells that do many different things, such as grow replacement parts for humans. Okay, so you have different types of stem cells. That's something that I think is important for you guys to know. All right, you have stem cells that can come from an adult, and then you have embryonic stem cells, which come from fertilized human eggs. And they're finding, at least scientists have a theory, that embryos uh, or embryonic stem cells, I should say, are more valuable uh, to research because they have a lot more benefits for humans. So speaking of those benefits, let's get to paragraph three, where we uh, see a lot of, um, you know, pretty much a lot of the benefits of embryonic stem cell research. So I titled this paragraph, The Argument in Support of Embryonic Stem Cell Research. So it had mentioned in this paragraph that if doctors can regrow spinal cord cells, people like Kai might be able to walk again. 
if they can produ produce new brain cells. Doctors can help people who have lost brain function from strokes and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so again, they believe that if they can, uh, you know, research embryonic stem cells and perhaps, you know, inject them into people that have uh, these medical conditions, they're hoping that, you know, the stem cells, the embryonic stem cells could help to cure these individuals. They also think that uh, scientists could also grow cells that produce insulin and could help people with diabetes. Again, another, um, you know, possible um, benefit of embryonic stem cell research. However, the problem is that in order to obtain some stem cells, okay, so in order to obtain really the embryonic stem cells, doctors must destroy a human embryo. However, human embryos are often obtained from unfertilized eggs and in vitro fertilization labs or IVF labs. So I have to talk a little, uh, little health-wise right now, a little very scientifically. Um, so let me explain what an IVF lab is or an in vitro fertilization lab. So it says an IVF labs are used by couples who have difficulty rep reproducing a child the natural way. So for couples who cannot produce um, or reproduce the natural way, you know, by having sex, um, they sometimes have to use what are called IVF labs in order to have babies. Um, so that involves the male donating some of his sperm and the female donating her eggs. And then what happens in a lab is they actually, um, you know, intersect the sperm and the egg. And, you know, that's how, uh, you know, a baby is, is produced. Okay. So then what they end up with are, you know, these eggs or these embryos that can then be injected into the mother and be carried in her womb. And then, you know, nine months later, boom, you have a baby. So I hope that made some sense, but you know, thinking of these labs, let's say a couple has 10 eggs that have been fertilized. Okay. So, so it's not like you go and you just donate one sperm and one egg, you know, you, you give, uh, you know, as much, uh, as many eggs and as many sperm as, as, as required. Okay. And obviously a mother, uh, can only traditionally carry one embryo, uh, in her womb, uh, that could then, you know, become a baby. So if a couple has 10 eggs that have been fertilized, let's say, but only use four eggs to start their family. So, you know, let's say that they have four children um, and they, that's all they use to start their family. They have six legs left, uh, six legs, <laughs> six eggs. I think I said six legs yesterday when I went over this with Haley. Uh, they have six eggs left over that could be used for stem cell research. All right. So, you know, if they're only using four of those 10, those remaining six could then be, you know, studied by scientists, perhaps have, you know, some stem cells extracted from them that could have possible human benefits. All right. Now, paragraph four gets into the issue with stem cell research. It says that many people believe that human life begins the moment an egg is fertilized and equate destroying a human embryo to murder. So, you know, a lot of people believe that that moment that a sperm and an egg intersect, okay, that is when life is started. And they say that, you know, destroying or using these uh, embryo embryos uh, for stem cell research, they equate that to, to murder. So they say it's like, you know, doing that, destroying those and, you know, using their stem cells for research um, is murder. As a result, most of these people feel that stem cells should only be used if they have been obtained from adults, not embryos. So a lot of some people you know, our agree like stem cell research, it's important, we should do it, but we should not be using embryos because, you know, doing that is, is murder. Rather, they say that, you know, we should be obtaining stem cells from other adults. But the problem is, all right, according to scientists, they state that the problem with stem cells from adults is that they will not develop in the same way as a stem cell from an embryo. So, um, the embryonic stem cells in scientists' eyes have a lot more benefits because, they have, you know, the ability perhaps, you know, to, to um, you know, produce replacement parts and cure some of these uh, medical conditions, whereas stem cells from adults don't necessarily have those same benefits. Now, paragraph five gets a little bit more into the argument against embryonic stem cell research. Um, so we kind of get to see the opposing view for people who are against embryonic stem cell research. So here's some of the reasons. Um, people object to tax dollars being spent on something they believe is unethical due to their belief that destroying a human embryo is murder. So again, people don't think that it's right for the government to uh, pretty much be providing money to these labs 
to commit murder. All right, that's that's the argument that they propose. Additionally, it would take many years to investigate the benefits of embryonic stem cell research, and it costs millions of dollars to conduct research. So uh, some people who are against embryonic stem cell research, um, they have an issue with you know the cost, right? It costs millions of dollars to research, and it takes a lot of time. So they're worried that you know the government, if they were, you know, providing funds to these labs to conduct embryonic stem cell research, they're worried that, you know, these labs might not show results for 20 years down the road or if they show any results at all. So it'd pretty much just be like, you know, flushing your money down the toilet. Um, so the, the article kind of wraps up just asking, you know, kind of where do you stand? Uh, should the government fund embryonic stem cell research? And that's in an effort to get you thinking about what your initial opinion is. And right now, um, I'm seeing a lot more benefits, at least in my personal opinion. Now, this is a very touchy topic. Some people might not agree with my opinion, and that's totally fine. I respect your opinion. You know, we're not here to um, you know put each other down because of our opinions. All right, having an opinion leads to meaningful discussion, leads to new ideas. Keep that in mind. All right, now I'm going to take you on over to our vocabulary to kind of wrap things up today. Hopefully, the article and my notes make a bit of sense. Um, so now what I'm going to do is going to hit the present button. Let me just make sure my recording's going smoothly. It is. I think if I hit present here, the screen will get bigger. I don't think I've tried it this way before, so I'm a little bit nervous. All right. So again, we're generation 2.07. Should the government fund embryonic stem cell research? So here's a picture of an embryo. All right. An embryo is a noun. It's a fertilized egg in a mother's womb. Okay, or I just simply put a fertilized egg. Uh, so this could also be embryos or embryonic as an adjective, right? Like embryonic stem cell research. And as you can see in this, this picture of an embryo, we can see some fingers developing. And this is not right away, okay? This isn't like, oh, sperm hits egg. This is what you end up with, okay? This is, uh, I want to say, this has got to be at least... Um, six to eight weeks uh, after the egg has become fertilized. So the sample sentence reads, stem cells are found in fertilized human eggs called embryos. The turn and talk asks, should scientists be allowed to destroy a human embryo for research that could save lives? Now, in my opinion, again, I shared this with you a few moments ago, I think that scientists should be allowed to destroy a human embryo um, for research that could save millions of lives. Uh, because when I think about life, right, in my opinion, life to me does not necessarily uh, start until you're actually born. And when they're using these human embryos or studying these human embryos, they're doing it way before this phase of uh, embryonic growth that we're seeing in this photo. Okay. So what you see in this photo isn't exactly, oh, that's what they're taking the stem cells out of. All right. Uh, that's where they're taking the embryonic stem cells from. It's not from, you know, it's, it's a lot smaller. We're thinking small, small, small on the molecular um, and cellular level. Our next word is paralyze. Paralyze is an adjective meaning unable to move. It could also be paralyze as a verb. So such as, you know, the injury paralyzed the soldier or the injury paralyzed Kai. Okay, if we use it in that sentence, it would be a verb. Now here's paralyzed as an adjective. After being shot, Kai was paralyzed from the waist down. Okay, so Kai was paralyzed from the waist down after being shot in that accidental uh, shooting in Boston. Now, the turn and talk, how do you think school would be different for a paralyzed student? Now, I think school would be very different for a paralyzed student. Uh, obviously, mobility is an issue. Uh, so I think getting around the hallways, uh, particularly in larger schools like Durfee, uh, where they don't have you know line basics like we have at Doran, would probably be pretty difficult uh, for a student who is paralyzed. Um, so that's how I think school would be different for a paralyzed student, is that it would be a, a lot more difficult uh, you know, to get around the school uh, without, you know, bumping into people and, you know, having these huge crowds to kind of navigate through. Our next word is theory. Theory is a noun. It's an explanation for a set of related facts. Okay. So I think of theory just like it's, it's an idea. Okay. It's, it's a thought. It's an idea that somebody has that is usually, um, you know, explained with facts. So this could also be theories as a noun. Or theorize is a verb, so scientists could theorize, like so right now scientists theorize that embryonic stem cell research could be beneficial. Or we might say that scientists have a theory that 
embryonic stem cell research could be beneficial. So the sample sentence they provide us for theory as a noun reads, some scientists have a theory that stem cells can someday help people like Kai. The turn and talk asks, share your theory about extraterrestrial life and aliens. Well, if you guys didn't see my shirt the other day, um, then you, sh well, if you did, I should say, if you saw my shirt the other day, you should know my theory about extraterrestrial life. And I think that extraterrestrial life exists, all right? Aliens exist. I think it's facetious to say that we are the only intelligent life forms in this entire galaxy and this whole shebang and this whole, you know, whatever you want to call solar system and beyond, all right? I think that extraterrestrial life exists. The next word is investigate. Investigate is a verb, which means to try to learn about, okay? So to try to learn about something, to inquire about something, to investigate. Could also be investigates, investigating, or investigated as a verb, or investigation, which is a noun. An investigation is when you're trying to learn about something. Okay. Um, you know, it's a, it's so I think about like a CSI, crime scene investigation, right? What are they doing? They're, tr they go to the crime scene, they're trying to learn about what caused the crime. So the sample sentence for investigate as a verb reads investigating stem cells will take years and cost millions of dollars all right and again we had seen that that was seems to be kind of an argument against embryonic stem cell research so the turn and talk question reads what is a topic you would like to investigate well considering we were just talking about aliens i would definitely like to investigate aliens a bit more all right i'd like to know a bit more facts about you know what what is out there all right, maybe the government could give us some some more information i know the whole area 51 raid didn't go as planned Last but not least, we have the word obtain. Obtain as a verb means to get. It could also be obtained or obtains. And if we look at the photograph here, we can see, um, you know, somebody is uh, somebody obtained this letter from the other person. Okay, I actually need to add another variation here. It could also be obtaining. Okay, which is a active tense verb. So the sample sentence reads: Scientists could not obtain federal money for research on embryonic stem cells. The turn and talk reads, what do you have to do to obtain permission to hang out with your friends after school? Well, I'm not a student anymore, but when I was a, st a student, uh, to obtain permission to hang out with my friends after school, I had to have my chores done, had to have my homework done, all right? Those were like my one, two, all right? Homework was actually first, so I should say homework first, then my chores, then I could go out and I could go shoot hoop at Ruggles Park, I could, you know, take a bike, ride down to the to the um to the waterfront um I, you know i could go to my favorite corner store maybe buy some candy if if i did my chores extra well my mother might give me a dollar or two to go you know get some airheads and uh arizona iced tea because arizona has been 99 cents since i was younger than you guys all right and i believe that is our last word of the day so going to Stop presenting the screen. Just going to edit this slide real quick if it's going to let me. If not, I'll just go back and do it after. Oh, it, it will. Okay. Uh, obtaining. Bingo. So to wrap things up, tomorrow we're going to get into uh, Word Generation 2.07 Day 2, which is the Do the Math section. Uh, so looking forward to getting that done with you. Um, Tomorrow's also the first day of May. Uh, really looking forward to it. I mean, we've had a lot of rain and 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 you know, kind of cruddy weather during the month of April, being stuck in the house. So, uh, hoping for brighter days this May. Uh, and again, looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Uh, last but not least, don't forget to check in on Google Classroom with the question of the week. Uh, seven Harvard, you currently got the lead, but you're only up by one. Seven Yale, you're the two-time defending champs, and you're just gonna you're just gonna bow out like that. I don't think so. All right, we're fighters. We're going to make it happen. Uh, so with that being said, going to wrap things up, get back to our song of the day. Again, the Foo Fighters, my hero off of the album, The Color and the Shape, one of Mr. V's all-time favorite albums. Here we go. All right, guys, until next time, just want to say again, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you all again tomorrow, bright and early at 11 a.m.
Make sure you wash them hands, too. I'm not forgetting every day I'm reminding you guys. Wash your hands. Peace out, guys. Love you.